Restoration in the 18th century, 1660 to 1798. In 1649, Charles I was removed from the throne in England and sent into exile. Parliament put Puritan ideals in charge with the appointment of Oliver Cromwell as Lord Protectorate. England moved into a period of rule by Parliament instead of being ruled by a king or queen. All was well in England, and poets like John Donne marked the change from a courtier lifestyle to a court built on the ideals of the Puritan religion. When Oliver Cromwell died in 1659, his son Richard Cromwell declared himself Lord Protectorate. This angered Parliament, who felt the new Commonwealth was no different than having the country ran by a monarch. Parliament removed the Commonwealth from power and restored the monarchy to power by bringing King Charles's son, Charles II, home to England to rule. Restoring the monarch also restored freedom to authors. During the Cromwell years, censorship occurred in all forms of literature. With the removal of the censorship, authors rushed to print their saved material for all to read. Charles II prized himself on his knowledge and worldliness. He sponsored studies into mathematics and philosophy. As for religion, Charles preferred a tolerant approach to those of other faiths and beliefs. Instead of persecution of the Puritans, he chose instead to keep them from public office. This led to an increase of prose literature that depicted dissent, political theory, and economics. Poetry moved from the common lyrical style to forms such as odes, pastoral poetry, and aerial verse. This move also coincided with the change of writing from personal experiences to a more public experience of psychology and philosophy. Rhyming couplets in iambic pentameter was the most common form utilized. Prose during this period saw the birth of two genres that would dominate the future of writing, fiction and journalism. Although religious writing continued to be the mainstay of prose, writers began to stray into topics of political and social importance. In addition, with Charles II's love of philosophy, writers began to explore this genre and the use of satire became an increasingly popular literary convention. With Charles' death in 1685, his brother James II took the throne. James, however, was not well liked and Parliament soon replaced him with Charles's daughter, Mary, and her husband, William. Their taking of the throne was so peaceful and desirable, it was named the Glorious Revolution. In 1689, William and Mary reaffirmed the Bill of Rights that allowed those who owned property to rule through an elected Parliament. Though not a democracy, England now had the most representative government of the time period. When Mary, and then William, died, the country's new queen took the throne. Her name was Queen Anne, and she was the daughter of James II. Upon her death, she left no heir, so the throne passed to her cousin George I. He was followed by his son George II. As Germans, they were both highly unpopular with the English people. However, their heir, George III, was raised an Englishman and was more accepted by the English citizens. The period of the 18th century is commonly known as the Age of Enlightenment or the Age of Reason. Major emphasis was put on reason, logic, harmony, and stability. The period saw much growth in technology from the invention of the telescope by Isaac Newton in 1668 to the invention of the cotton gin by Eli Whitney in 1793. And in literature, Dr. Samuel Johnson published the first dictionary of the English language in 1755. With the advent of the Industrial Revolution, changes in the average man's life also became common. During this time, the literacy rate of men increased to 50%. Coffee houses became the place for educated men to spend their evenings discussing literary and political issues. Fences around property began to pop up in the countryside, effectively causing the death of village life. Factories began to spring up, and workers left rural life in order to take the new jobs created. With the decline in farming lifestyles, the impoverished masses began to grow due to a decrease of food production and an increase in prices. Just like the Restoration, the Age of Reason also saw a change in the forms of literature published. Letters and diaries, items always written for personal reasons, began to become popular in literary circles. The use of wit and satire continued to grow in popularity, especially with the advent of revolutionary fervor that began to sweep both Europe and the fledgling American colonies. 
From the Restoration to the Age of Reason, the world of literature began to evolve into forms still common in our contemporary society. Political and social issues took center stage while religious ideals in literature began to fade. Knowledge and understanding became focal points that led to the beginnings of revolutions and industrializations that would usher in a new world order.